Top 20 MEP Fresher Interview Questions and Answers The field of MEP, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing forms the backbone of modern building systems. For freshers entering this industry, a solid understanding of core concepts and practical applications is crucial to succeed in interviews and on-site roles. This guide presents the top 20 MEP interview questions frequently asked of entry-level candidates. Each answer is crafted to help you demonstrate technical knowledge, problem-solving skills, and a readiness to contribute to real-world construction and design projects. Whether you're preparing for your first job or aiming to build confidence, this resource will help you take the next step in your MEP career. 1. What is MEP and why is it important in construction projects? MEP stands for Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing. It encompasses the systems that make a building functional and habitable. Mechanical includes HVAC, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Electrical includes power distribution, lighting, and fire alarms, and plumbing includes water supply, drainage, and gas systems. MEP is critical because it directly affects the safety, comfort, energy efficiency, and operational functionality of buildings. Without well-designed MEP systems, even a structurally sound building could be uninhabitable or inefficient. Proper MEP integration ensures project success, cost efficiency, sustainability, and compliance with local codes and safety standards. Two, what are the major components of an HVAC system? The major components of an HVAC system include the air handling unit, AHU, chillers or boilers, ductwork, fans, filters, dampers, thermostats, and diffusers or grills. The HU circulates and conditions air. Chillers cool water for air conditioning, while boilers heat water for space heating. Ducts distribute the conditioned air throughout the building. Thermostats control temperature, and fans help in air movement. Filters clean the air by removing dust and contaminants. These components work together to provide thermal comfort and acceptable indoor air quality making the environment healthier and more energy efficient. Three, can you explain the difference between a chiller and a cooling tower? A chiller is a mechanical device used to remove heat from a liquid, usually water, via a vapor compression or absorption refrigeration cycle. The chilled water is then circulated through the building to provide cooling. A cooling tower, on the other hand, is used to remove heat from the water used in HVAC systems, especially in large buildings. It dissipates heat to the atmosphere via evaporation. While chillers produce chilled water, cooling towers reject the heat absorbed by the chiller system. Both are critical in HVAC for maintaining indoor temperatures but serve different roles in the cooling process. 4. What is the role of a pump in plumbing systems? A pump in plumbing systems is used to move fluids, mainly water, from one place to another. Its primary role is to ensure adequate water pressure and flow especially in high-rise buildings or areas where natural gravity flow is insufficient. Pumps are also used in drainage, firefighting systems, hot water circulation, and some pits. Types include centrifugal pumps, booster pumps, submersible pumps, and diaphragm pumps. Proper sizing and placement of pumps ensure system reliability, efficiency, and water conservation. Without pumps, Delivering consistent water supply or waste removal in many buildings would be impractical. 5. How does a circuit breaker differ from a fuse? A circuit breaker and a fuse both protect electrical circuits from overloads and short circuits, but they operate differently. A fuse contains a metal wire that melts when current exceeds a safe level, breaking the circuit permanently. It must be replaced after it operates. A circuit breaker, however, uses a mechanical switch that trips when an overload or fault is detected, it can be reset manually or automatically, making it reusable. Circuit breakers are more convenient, safer for repeated use, and often used in modern installations, while fuses are cheaper and still used in some small-scale or temporary setups. 6. What is the purpose of earthing or grounding in an electrical system? Earthing or grounding is a safety measure that involves connecting electrical equipment or systems to the earth. Its purpose is to protect people and equipment from electrical faults. In case of a short circuit or insulation failure, excess current flows directly to the ground instead of passing through a human body or sensitive devices. 
This reduces the risk of electric shocks and equipment damage. Grounding also stabilizes voltage levels in the system and helps prevent electrical fires. It is a mandatory practice governed by electrical codes and plays a crucial role in system reliability and safety. 7. What is the function of a VFD, Variable Frequency Drive? A Variable Frequency Drive, VFD, controls the speed and torque of an electric motor by varying the frequency and voltage supplied to it. It's commonly used in HVAC systems, pumps, fans, and compressors. The main advantage of using a VFD is energy efficiency. Motors consume only as much power as needed rather than operating at full speed constantly. VFDs also improve system performance, reduce wear and tear on equipment, and allow for soft starting, which prevents sudden surges. By matching motor speed to demand, VFDs contribute to operational cost savings and sustainability in building systems. Eight. Describe the types of fire protection systems used in buildings. Fire protection systems are categorized into active and passive types. Active systems include sprinklers, fire alarms, smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, and hydrants. These systems detect and suppress fires through automated or manual activation. Passive systems involve fire-resistant walls, doors, and floors designed to contain fires and prevent their spread. Emergency lighting, Exit signs and smoke extraction systems also play vital roles. Integrated fire protection is essential for occupant safety and code compliance. The design and placement of these systems must follow local fire codes and NFPA, National Fire Protection Association, standards. 9. What is BMS, Building Management System, and how does it relate to MEP? A Building Management System, BMS, is a computer-based control system that manages and monitors mechanical and electrical systems in a building, including HVAC, lighting, power, fire systems, and security. In MEP, BMS provides centralized automation for these services, optimizing performance, reducing energy usage, and improving occupant comfort. It collects data from sensors and control devices to maintain system efficiency and detect faults. BMS plays a key role in smart buildings by integrating MEP systems for better control, maintenance scheduling, and remote access. It enhances sustainability and helps meet green building certifications like LEED or BREAM. 10. How do you calculate the HVAC load for a building? HVAC load calculation involves estimating the heating and cooling requirements of a building to maintain a comfortable indoor environment. It is calculated using factors like building size, orientation, insulation, window size, occupancy, internal equipment heat gain, and climate. The calculation includes three components, sensible heat, temperature change, latent heat, humidity control, and ventilation needs. Methods include manual J for residential and software like HAP, Trace 700, or Carrier E20. Accurate load calculations ensure system efficiency, prevent undersizing or oversizing, and support energy-efficient design. Proper sizing directly affects occupant comfort, energy bills, and equipment lifespan. 11. What is the significance of pipe sizing in plumbing design? Proper pipe sizing in plumbing design ensures efficient water flow, optimal pressure, and system longevity. Oversized pipes increase costs and reduce velocity, leading to stagnant water and poor turnover while undersized pipes result in pressure drops and restricted flow. Factors affecting pipe size include flow rate, pipe length, elevation, number of fixtures, and material. Correct sizing reduces energy use in pumping, prevents noise or cavitation, and ensures compliance with plumbing codes. Hydraulic calculations and tools like the Hazen-Williams formula are used for accurate design. Ultimately, Proper pipe sizing improves system performance, reliability, and user satisfaction. 12. What is a single-line diagram in electrical systems? A single-line diagram, SLD, is a simplified representation of an electrical system using standardized symbols to show the main components and their connections. It displays the flow of electrical power from the source, for example, utility or generator, through transformers, panels, circuit breakers, and loads. Although it shows only one line for clarity, it represents all three phases in a three-phase system. 
SLDs are crucial for system design, analysis, fault identification, and maintenance planning. They help engineers and technicians understand the layout, capacity, and operation of electrical networks and are often required in project documentation. 13. Explain the difference between static pressure and dynamic pressure in ductwork. Static pressure is the pressure exerted by air at rest within a duct, while dynamic pressure is the pressure due to the air's motion. Static pressure affects how air moves through ducts and past filters, dampers, or coils. Dynamic pressure is related to air velocity and affects how far and fast air travels. Total pressure in a duct is the sum of static and dynamic pressures. Understanding the balance between these helps in selecting fan sizes and duct dimensions. Improper pressure balance can lead to noise, poor airflow, and inefficiency in HVAC systems. 14. What are some common MEP-related safety practices at construction sites? Common MEP safety practices include lockout slash tagout for electrical work, proper PPE, gloves, helmets, goggles, using insulated tools, and following confined space procedures. Workers must follow lifting protocols, especially for heavy MEP equipment like ducting or cable trays. Electrical panels must be clearly labeled, and temporary installations should be grounded. Fire safety includes having extinguishers on-site and avoiding flammable storage near heat sources. Regular toolbox talks, risk assessments, and safety audits help maintain awareness. Adhering to OSHA, NFPA, and local safety codes ensures the well-being of workers and prevents costly accidents or project delays. 15. How would you handle a situation where mechanical and electrical services are clashing on-site? Clashes between mechanical and electrical services are common due to limited space. The first step is reviewing coordination drawings and identifying the conflict zone. Communicate with relevant teams, MEP, Structural Architectural, to understand design intent and constraints. Use BIM, Building Information Modeling, tools to visualize and resolve conflicts digitally. Consider rerouting non-critical services or adjusting elevations. Document any changes and get approvals before implementation. Collaboration, flexibility, and proactive planning are essential. Early detection during coordination meetings prevents delays and cost overruns, ensuring smooth execution without compromising functionality or design standards. 16. What software tools are you familiar with for MEP design and drafting? For example, AutoCAD, Revit MEP, Common MEP design and drafting tools include AutoCAD for 2D drawings and Revit MEP for 3D modeling and BIM. AutoCAD is widely used for schematic diagrams and layout plans. Revit MEP enables coordinated design of HVAC, electrical, and plumbing systems in a shared environment, improving clash detection and quantity takeoffs. Other tools include Navisworks for model review and clash detection, HAP and Carrier E20 for HVAC load calculations, and ETAP or Gelux for electrical design. Familiarity with these tools enhances accuracy, efficiency, and collaboration across disciplines, supporting better project outcomes and reduced rework. 17. What is the purpose of a sump pump and where is it used? A sump pump is used to remove accumulated water from a sump pit, typically located in basements or below ground spaces. Its primary purpose is to prevent flooding and manage groundwater or rainwater intrusion. It activates when water reaches a certain level, pumping it out to a designated drainage area. Some pumps are critical in areas with high water tables or poor drainage. They are also used in elevator pits, underground parking, and utility rooms. Regular maintenance is essential to ensure reliability. Installing a backup power source like a battery or generator can prevent failures during power outages. 18. Describe the types of lighting systems used in commercial buildings. Commercial buildings use various lighting systems based on function, aesthetics, and energy efficiency. These include ambient lighting, general illumination, task lighting, focused on specific areas like desks, accent lighting, highlighting features or displays, and emergency lighting, used during power failure. Common fixtures are LED panels, troughers, downlights, and motion sensor lights. Daylighting systems use sensors to adjust artificial lighting based on natural light availability. 
lighting control systems with timers, dimmers, or BMS integration help reduce energy consumption. Efficient lighting enhances comfort, productivity, and sustainability, and often contributes to LEED certification or other green building standards. 19. What is diversity factor in electrical design? Diversity factor in electrical design represents the ratio of the total connected load to the maximum demand at a given time. It accounts for the fact that not all connected electrical equipment operates simultaneously at full load. A higher diversity factor indicates a more efficient use of system capacity. It allows engineers to size transformers, panels, and conductors more economically without oversizing the infrastructure. For example, residential buildings may have a higher diversity factor than industrial facilities. Accurate diversity factor calculation ensures cost-effective design, prevents overloading, and helps optimize power distribution systems. 20. Why is coordination between MEP services and civil-slash-architectural disciplines critical in a project? Coordination between MEP services and civil-slash-architectural disciplines is vital to prevent spatial conflicts, ensure structural compatibility, and maintain design intent. Poor coordination can lead to rework, delays, increased costs, or compromised system functionality. For example, ductwork may clash with beams, or plumbing lines may not align with slab openings. BIM models, coordination meetings, and clash detection tools help resolve such issues early in the design phase. Effective collaboration ensures smooth installation, easier maintenance access, and code compliance. Ultimately, it results in a well-integrated building that is efficient, safe, and functional. Mastering the fundamentals of MEP systems is essential for any aspiring engineer stepping into the construction and building services industry. The questions and answers provided here are designed to give you a comprehensive overview of what to expect in interviews and how to respond confidently. As a fresher, your willingness to learn, combined with foundational technical knowledge, can set you apart. Continue building your understanding through hands-on experience, site visits, and relevant software tools. With the right preparation, you'll be well-equipped to begin a successful journey in the MEP field.